Cisco StealthWatch Cloud on-premise sensor deployment. Again, I'm really excited about this technology because it's really, really easy to get up and running. It provides a tremendous amount of visibility really quick, whether it's uh, on-prem, even though it says StealthWatch Cloud, it has an on-prem uh, capability as well as it has capabilities within Azure AWS or GCP. So we're gonna do the on-premise uh, sensor deployment and it's pretty easy. They've done a really good job of providing very clear documentation on how to do the installation. So once you get the welcome to StealthWatch Cloud, th they give you an option there to add or download the ISO. You can put in the IP address of the sensor itself here as well. This is the help guide. Very quickly, you can pivot to areas of interest um, if you're interested in reading the entire guide, go for it, right? Um, for me, I'm just going to focus on the things that I need to do, right? So the first thing is, is what do what is required for um, this virtual um, instance of the sensor? So you can see two gigs of RAM, uh, at least two cores, 32 gigs of storage. Um, it talks about if you want to capture on uh, a hypervisor, make sure you're in promiscuous mode uh, and use uh, VLAN ID 4095. And it gives you the steps to do that. Now I've already got the actual interface configured as such, so I don't have to do anything there. Um, and again, the guide is very uh, clear in what you need to do there with steps one through seven. So feel free to do that if you need to do that. If not, everything from start to finish, like other videos, is all included in this single video, right? And the total time of the video is 12 minutes, and obviously it'll take some time for the uh, virtual instance to actually deploy, right? So let's deploy a new virtual machine. I'm using an old version of ESX55 uh, in my uh, lab environment. Give it uh, a name. Pick the data store that you want it uh, to be built in. And here I'm picking uh, Linux, Ubuntu 64. And here I'm just picking uh, two uh, virtual sockets and two cores. Here I'm adding um, four gigs of RAM. So I kind of doubled up on the two. Uh, and here I'm gonna add a couple of interfaces. Um, and that will just give me maybe some flexibility later on if I wanted to do something else. Because all I'm gonna do in this video is actually start capturing data within my virtual environment, right? I'm gonna use that promiscuous port. That's what I'm looking for here. Um, and I'm gonna capture all VLANs and I'm gonna get visibility into what ha is happening on uh, my virtual uh, switches or my virtual network, right? And here I'm just gonna pin it to another uh, interface for NIC3, but uh, I'm really not using um, that at this point. Then we hit next. We don't do anything here. We'll leave this. We'll put 32 gigs here. And we'll hit finish. Right, with the summary here. So again, this is pretty easy. You just look at the guide. The video includes it because I wanna show you from start to finish, right? Um, you know, uh, I, 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 I come across a lot of videos out there that show you snippets of how to do something, never shows you the entire uh, scenario and therefore then you have to go digging around potentially to see things all right so once deployed I'm just coming in here and I'm going to tie the ISO so I downloaded that ISO that link that you saw on that welcome page and I've uploaded it to a repository on the ESX server and now I'm just going to point to it right so basically connect on power. So when I boot up, I, I uh, now I'm gonna boot into that uh, ISO image. We'll power that uh, 
VM up. Go into the VM. And you can see almost half the video is just doing the installation, right? So we want to install the appliance. Pick the language of interest. Right, you can detect the keyboard layout. Again, I'm not skipping anything. I'm really showing you uh, end to end. Now, I will cut out pieces of this uh, when it starts actually doing the installation. It's not prompting for any questions because um, I'm sure you have better time or better use of your time than sit here and watch the entire installation process. It didn't take that long. I think within 15 minutes or so, uh, the box was up and running. It asks what primary network interface. That'll be the first one. That's the one tied to my management network. Getting an IP, give a, create a user. Um, so I just created a user called observe. Remember this, this was through that acquisition of uh, Cisco uh, acquired observable networks, right? So that's why I'm using observe. And you may see references to that name uh, throughout the product uh, itself, right? Time zone. You can select how you want to partition the disks here. Could do manual. I just want guided uh, use entire disk. Just making sure that you're good with what uh, changes are going to be enforced here. I didn't do anything here, I just hit continue. Now this is, I, I mentioned this is one of the easier technologies you'll, you'll deploy. I believe I mentioned that, right? Um, and I really mean that. Um, if you look at some of the technology Cisco's got in the security space, Cisco umbrella, right? DNS la layer security, it's got content security and you know, that product's evolving and, and doing some really cool stuff. Again, getting up and just getting DNS layer protection for any organization, I'm even talking 20,000 users, is a matter of minutes in regards to change, right? So uh, when I say minutes, I'm literally saying it takes minutes to make the change itself and build policy to add, to add uh, DNS layer security. That's very similar to this technology as well, right? At least the on-premise side. Uh, I haven't done AWS or, or GCP or Azure, uh, but it would be similar, right? So very quickly, you're going to see, I'm going to put this in. 12 minutes, I'm now capturing flow. I am not only capturing flow, but I have behavioral analytics that are looking for things and that'll alert me when, when something of interest comes up w without really changing the product at all. Like you leveraging the default um, configuration and settings. Um, so it's pretty cool, right? Because uh, if you ask me, most organizations have a lack of visibility, right? End to end. And that and, and, and seeing what's happening specifically um, east, west, right? North, south, we, we seem to be doing a better job of that because we have the uh, control points that are usually uh, transitioning an L3 boundary at some point, right? So then we've got something in place that's providing us some visibility, right? This is going to ensure that we not only get north-south, but also east-west type conversation, so, um, which is pretty cool. And very quickly, you can create something, and I've done this, and I'll show this in a later video, but um, I've done uh, geo-based 
uh, countries of, of interest, right? That might be communicating with my environment. So you can see here, I said yes to Grub um, to do the install. Again, it's just letting you know that it's gonna make this change. And when it does, it's uh, a change that's forever, right? So in, vir in a virtual instance, not a big deal. Um, obviously, if you're putting this on a laptop and uh, you want to dual boot, uh, you want to make sure that you are doing um, or installing it in a manner of which that you don't wipe an existing operating system out. Not that that would be a use case here, but the warning is always good. All right, so that's it for the install, right? Now the platform will come up. It'll boot up. We'll log in. Now I've created a troubleshooting video just after this. And the reason I, I created it was twofold. One was I was using the wrong IP address for uh, communication. That's the external IP address that the sensor would be connecting to the cloud with. Um, so I had to do some troubleshooting to figure out why I wasn't seeing it in the interface. Now I didn't include this in this piece. Um, the IP address that you saw is not the IP address that's connected to the, the cloud itself. Um, I, I did resolve all that, but I did make a separate video that uh, I'll show you very shortly. All right, so that's pretty much it, right? So now it'll take some time before the sensor starts sending um, data, right? It's all encrypted, but it'll take some time for that to happen, and then you'll start seeing data populate. You see on the, the right side, it talks about AWS, VPC, you've got GCP for Google Cloud Platform, and then you got Azure, right? So there's uh, an extension into the cloud environment itself so you can get some rich data uh, in regards to what's happening in that environment as well. All right, so it says initializing, and then finally some data will start coming in. Now, we're not gonna see a whole bunch of stuff right yet, right? So we can see the sensors online. Um, but we can start seeing some data populate here, right? At the very, very end. Sources, right? It's still coming up, but we can see the default RFC 1918 has certainly got some connections. Um, and then there's some no subnet mat matches. Um, this no network operation center is pretty cool, right? So you can see all your observations or open alerts here. You can pivot uh, into those as well. Gives you a view of who you might be communicating with, right? What the traffic might be up, down, etc. And that's pretty much it, right? All you had to do is deploy the sensor, make sure that you use the IP address, right? That's connecting or making the connection outbound to the cloud environment. Um, get it installed. The default settings are there to include uh, typical internal uh, uh, networks, RFC 1918. Let it run. It'll start crunching data just like it, does, it it's doing here. And it's gonna start capturing observations. So you can see the port scanner. Um, you can see some of the traffic uh, around globally with that visual. But now I can pivot into these observations. You can see 227 of them uh, are there. Um, overall, that's the entire network. And then you'll start seeing some alerts, right, at some point. And uh, then you can start troubleshooting and look at whether or not those alerts are true alerts, meaning that they're impacting your environment or uh, potentially maybe a false positive, right? Uh, we'll end up going through and we'll add these endpoints that we discover into and we'll put them into roles. Here very quickly, we're seeing the heartbeat and we're receiving data, done, that's it.